How are you? Hi. Okay, so uh, can you try to share your screen and see it, if we can see it? That looks like it's working to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really love your back background as usual. <laughs> so, okay, you can make it uh, make your screen a uh, full screen and then uh, people can saw, saw that. Okay. Do you know what? It's in Firefox and Firefox likes to show the ah. URL bar. Whatever, <laughs> so I'm going to leave it like that for now, I'm afraid. <laughs> okay, okay. So uh, I, I will leave the time to you. Thanks, Phil. Thank you so much, Patrick. And good afternoon to everybody. It is afternoon in Singapore as well as in Melbourne, uh, where I am myself. So uh, time zones, eh? What about that? Um, as Patrick said, my name is Phil Ash. I am a developer evangelist at a company called Twilio. Uh, Twilio, if you don't know, is a, a platform for communications. Uh, that is, we have a whole bunch of APIs uh, that you can use in your applications to do everything, everything involved in communications that's not face-to-face, -face, which is actually all communications, if I think about it these days. Um, uh, so everything from text messaging, phone calls, uh, all the way through to video, email, and uh, fax, if you feel that desperate. Um, uh, I'm not here to talk about Toya today, but you can find me anywhere else online uh, under the name Phil Nash uh, if you have any further questions, and I'll drop this uh, inf uh, information at the end of the talk as well. But today, I want to talk about the problem, the trouble with webhooks. Uh, and I think this uh, kind of ties in nicely to a bunch of things that I've seen in the conference uh, already so far today, uh, because the problem with webhooks is really a problem of developer experience. If you were watching uh, Jed Ng's uh, keynote earlier, um, developer experience is hugely important uh, across a whole array of things. But uh, when you're actually trying to develop uh, against an API and a service that uses webhooks, uh, the developer experience of that is so important. So. Hopefully, we're going to see uh, today uh, how how we can do uh, better with that. But first, I, I should just quickly cover what a webhook is, in case you're unaware. Um, a webhook uh, is a user-defined HTTP callback. Uh, and that means, so for a service, um, an API service, uh, or indeed any other kind of service that uses webhooks, uh, it is user-defined because the service requires the user, the developer, to give it a URL. Uh, and then when actions or events happen on the platform, that URL is then called uh, with an HTTP request. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the application, the URL, receives the data about that request. In terms of things at Twilio, for example, when you have a Twilio phone number, uh, you can set up URLs, uh, webhook URLs for incoming text messages or incoming um, phone calls. And when that happens, Twilio sends all the details about the message or the call to your application. And then... Uh, you can respond to tell Twilio what to do with it. Um, so, should be straightforward. So, what's uh, and, and of course, like webhooks are used almost uh, in in so many of the uh, uh, companies that do, do APIs and other stuff like that. So, obviously, Twilio, Twilio SendGrid, which uh, is our email section these days, uh, Stripe, GitHub, Dropbox, Auth0, Slack. You can everybody <laughs> uh, is using uh, webhooks. Uh, indeed, um, uh, Bear uh, Douglas was talking about Slack, and they used webhooks a little bit earlier today as well. Um, so what's the trouble? What's the trouble with this? Well, the problem is, how do you test? How do you test this webhook? If you're a developer coming to a system uh, uh, that, for the first time, uh, that then tells you that you have to use webhooks in order to consume some of this content, um, and you just have to have a URL that gets called, um, how do you test it? When you're building an application, you don't necessarily already have your URL. You don't have this ready to go. If you're building a mobile application, you don't necessarily have a server. Um, and if you have an application that is halfway through being built and it's lying on your desktop uh, and you're running it and testing it locally, how do you get a URL for that? What does all this mean? Um, there are some options, some kind of third party options out there, of course. Um, uh, there are online uh, kind of testers like request bin or post bin, which will generate a unique URL that you can then plug in to that uh, webhook system and uh, and see what the uh, the webhooks look like and then know how you're going to kind of respond to them. Uh, that's really useful if you just if it's an informational webhook that you're just getting information about. Uh, but in cases like uh, Twilio, for example, where you actually have to make a response and tell Twilio what to do with this information. Um, then something like a tunnel, uh, like ngrok or local tunnel, could be the thing you you turn to as a developer. Um, this opens up a public URL that tunnels through to the application that's running on your on your own machine. 
the problem is if you don't know about these things, you still you still don't know how to test uh, a webhook. Um, and so I want to spend, uh, well, <laughs> your final option, of course, is deploy and test in production. But nobody is uh, is recommending that, honestly. Um, <laughs> so I want to spend the rest of the talk kind of trying to talk about what Twilio has done over the years uh, that I've seen as part of the company to try and make this experience better for developers, to try and improve this experience and make, uh, you know, getting from signing up uh, and getting an account to replying to a message or replying to a phone call um, or replying to an email or whatever it is uh, easier when it's dealing with webhooks. So first up, the most important thing uh, is documentation. Like there is no, uh, there's almost no product uh, without documentation uh, when it comes to APIs, uh, in my opinion, at least. Uh, within Twilio, we have uh, what we call a, an operational maturity model that all of our products have to go through in order to um, become generally available, go to GA. And what, uh, the, the model is a whole bunch of, uh, is a whole checklist of things that the, the, the product has to be able to check off to say, I've done that and I'm ready for that uh, before we can call it GA. And documentation is one of the most important items on that list. Without documentation, there is no product. Uh, and so we have, I'm not saying our documentation is the best, uh, indeed, I'm pretty sure at times uh, our documentation for our webhooks, in fact, uh, did not include um, the format of the request uh, that we made. And I've had to add that before. It's uh, form uh, URL encoded, uh, not JSON, not XML. It's form URL encoded. Uh, <laughs> so um, we have worked on that over the years. We continue to try and improve that. Documentation is always a work in progress, uh, but it underpins everything else. Um, so one of the first things that we did build to make uh, the experience of webhooks better was something we called Twimlets. And Twimlets is one of those um, experiments that you try as a company when you're very young uh, that uh, when they become popular, um, you know, never you can never get rid of them. I can tell you how young the company was uh, because uh, Twilio's um, Twimlets, uh, the, the web page looked like this. Uh, an experimental thing, uh, something um, that we only managed to update in the last couple of years. This is what it used to look like, and uh, something the brand team used to hate. Uh, don't know why. Um, <laughs> Twilio, it, so it was put under this kind of Twilio Labs banner, which was an experimental thing. And Twimlets themselves are actually little kind of, um, they were little widgets that you could put together uh, that would do things with a voice call. So you could forward a call to another person, or you could, um, uh, dial a voicemail or ring a bunch of people or start a conference call. Um, and you just had to configure it uh, and then it would give you the URL. So you wouldn't have to work on uh, building that webhook um, the thing to in ingest a webhook yourself. It would just give you a URL. Behind the scenes, there was a bunch of PHP code that was actually doing the work for you. Um, but this kind of builder uh, like allowed people to get started with a with a communication a common communications problem or a solution uh, without having to write any code without having to spin up a server of their own anything like that uh, and so Twimlets was really useful for that kind of fixed but common uh, use case and uh, that led us also to twimmel bins um, twimmel bins uh, much like things like request bin or post bin uh, were a way to generate a url and just um, return some Twimmel. So this is what Twimmelbin looked like. Uh, it was actually built by a bunch of third-party developers who thought this would be rather useful. Um, you'd generate a URL. You could then uh, enter uh, Twimmel, which is the way we talk back to Twilio. Um, in this particular case on this uh, screen, um, this is just responding with a message that says hello back. Um, and you could save this uh, and then and put that URL into uh, Twilio's console. Um, and you would have both what the a request looked like, but also a response to it. Pretty useful. So useful, in fact, that we actually ended up buying Twimmelbin off those developers and implementing it into the Twilio console. Uh, and so I can show you that just quickly. So this is if you if you have a phone number inside Twilio console, um, you might want to configure uh, what happens when a call comes in. Uh, and by default, that's a webhook, and you get this demo URL. But you can turn that into a Twimmelbin if you like. Uh, and uh, you can even create the Twimmelbin here. And this is me messing around with it earlier. Um, we added one little thing, apart from like building it into our console, we added one extra thing, which was uh, a little bit of templating. Uh, so uh, you could write kind of a little templated messages based on incoming um, 
uh, request parameters. So in this case, this Twimmel would respond by sending a message to another number and including like message from and the number that sent it and then the body of the original message. Uh, and so this also would check, you know, if your Twimmel was valid, you've got valid XML, uh, and then you can save that, host it on Twilio, and you never have to worry about what the webhook URL or anything is. And that led us to another idea, which was um, as a kind of serverless, um, serverless was growing up as an idea, we thought, what if we could give developers a way to create and run, write and run code, uh, just functions that would respond to webhooks uh, within the Toyo console. Um, and we did, we went ahead to, uh, we created this. This is again within the Twilio console. Uh, you could create yourself a Twilio function, which um, you give it a name and a path. You've got a unique URL. I managed to talk the team into giving me phil.twil.io quite a while ago. Um, and then write your JavaScript just inside the text area on the page right here. And again, this would check and, and kind of uh, lint your JavaScript a bit and make sure it was, was valid. Uh, and this gave developers a way to uh, you know, test out and play with webhooks without having to spin up a server with a URL itself because they would get one right inside this um, uh, inside this tool. Uh, but also uh, the JavaScript was then hosted and run on Twilio's infrastructure. So they didn't have to worry about that either. Um, pretty good for user experience, but I will come back to this because it's not necessarily the best. I'll tell you why in a bit. Um, alongside the idea of building uh, like a serverless platform for people to use. Uh, we also found that we we had more non-developers coming to Twilio uh, who wanted to do things uh, with, wanted to do things with communications, but didn't want to code. And, uh, you know, we didn't want to rely on the experimental Twimlets that were still lying around. Uh, so we built uh, what we call Studio. The Studio is a drag and drop builder. Um, this uh, reminds me, yeah, if you were watching, um, uh, Bear talking about Slack and their kind of journey earlier today. Uh, she talked about how they built uh, like a work, a visual workflow editor. Uh, and this is kind of our version of that. Uh, we built this visual uh, editor that has a bunch of widgets that would control communication flows. And in this case, you can see at the top, there's a trigger. Uh, the trigger can be an incoming message or an incoming call or a REST API call. But because it's a, an incoming call or incoming message, you just hook a number up to that kind of thing. Uh, then you no longer have to worry about what a webhook is. Um, and these widgets do various things like gather input in this particular case, and then uh, you can do decision trees based on it and split off and go and do things. And this is quite a, this is a relatively simple flow. It's only got five widgets on it. You can only get two outcomes, which is dialing two different numbers. Uh, but you can build massive flows uh, that, uh, that do an entire communications uh, thing for your application. Uh, it's pretty wild. Uh, and then at the edges, uh, if you do need to make calls off to your own custom code, then it can make HTTP requests. It can make, um, or it can call a Twilio function as well. Now, back on the education and documentation side of things, um, we uh, have always, this has been driven a lot by the, the evangelism team and the, and the developer network, which is the greater team around uh, evangelism and, and kind of developer relations. And the team that owned the documentation um, decided that they wanted to build uh, better in-person uh, workshops. And we have workshops going on today. Like workshops are an absolutely crucial part of um, teaching people how to use your services. Um, our workshop uh, it eventually kind of came under the title Twilio Quest uh, and, uh, and was very game focused and quest and mission focused, which has been a lot of fun. The first version of this happened at one of our um, in-person conferences. Uh, and that led to uh, the belief that we could actually build a game out of this and make it a lot of fun. Uh, it eventually led to um, Twilio Quest, which looks a bit like this, a uh, nice kind of 8-bit uh, style logo um, and an online uh, game that you could play to learn how to use Twilio itself. Uh, this uh, was kind of, it was very text-based. It, uh, it would give you missions to complete and um, and when you completed them, it could, pos it could sometimes self-verify that you completed the mission, give you XP, give you points for that, give you swag inside the game, all that kind of thing. Um, but it was actually a bit uh, cumbersome because a lot of the things could not be, um, 
could not be verified by the application itself. And so we still kind of tended to use this for in-person workshops uh, where teaching assistants could come along and verify things had gotten uh, done. And of course, we're talking about webhooks here. And you'll notice that this particular mission is to set up NGROC for local development. So we built the, that into the mission, which is, uh, which is quite fun. But that's still just kind of, here's this third-party tool, go for it, use it. Um, and we decided we could do better at Twilio Quest. Uh, and last year, uh, we ended up, we released Twilio Quest 3, uh, which took on a more 16-bit version and looked a bit more exciting. And I want to—I just want to show you a little bit of that uh, today. This is what Twilio Quest looks like. Uh, it's a full-on game. It's a downloadable application. Uh, you have your own uh, uh, robot helper as part of this. And uh, if you go over here, uh, you can take part in a bunch of missions. Uh, these missions include everything from basic training, which teaches you how to kind of use the, the game itself, um, lessons on PHP, JavaScript, um, Python, I think is in here somewhere. Yeah. Uh, and then also on products as well, such as Twilio Voice uh, or Twilio Messaging or Video or SendGrid Email. Uh, I'm going to pop into the messaging um, mission right now because I want to show you the, the sort of most important, I think, part of this for me uh, was... Um, I have done this mission before, but I can go into it again uh, because what we what we were able to do with a uh, with a uh, game that was installed on somebody's computer is actually provide them uh, an editor and an environment to work with uh, inside that. So inside here, we actually have full Node.js um, environment, uh, and we can give people sample code. And then not only that, and this is where the beautiful part about the webhooks comes in, is that uh, we've built into this particular code. <laughs> Uh, which requires you to respond to a webhook. As you can see, there's a Twimmel there responding to Leo Quest rules. Uh, this not only starts up a server, it also starts up uh, NGROC itself. It's a tunnel. And it doesn't make you edit your phone number's uh, webhook URL. It will set that up for you as well. So if I just run that right now, you can see at the bottom we are executing the program. We've got a local server. We've got an NGROC URL. And then we've configured the phone number. And I can just I can go and send a message. Uh, let's do that very quickly. Send it a message, and we should see that we got an incoming message from my phone number saying hello. Uh, and in the meantime, it's also sent me one back. It's that's appeared over here. Uh, sent me a message back. Uh, and so you don't have to know how to set up to receive these webhook webhooks um, as part of this game. You just have to learn the code that you're expected to write. And once you've done it, and you press hack, you can complete the objective and carry on with your mission. And so that we thought was, uh, was not only a bit of fun, but a great way to teach and learn things. And then finally, I want to go back to the serverless thing. Um, I want to go back to the serverless thing because uh, the serverless toolkit uh, became uh, something that actually grew organically out of the developer evangelism team in which uh, we saw that we had these kind of functions that were built into the console that you could write JavaScript in the console. But as a developer, that was a little uncomfortable. I don't. I want to put my code in source control. I want to be able to test and run it locally. Um, I don't want to have everything within this HTML page. And so we ended up building a few tools. Uh, my colleague Dominic started a, pro, uh, a project called Twilio Run, which uh, allowed you to take functions that were in the style of a Twilio function and run them locally. Um, I then created a project called Create Twilio Function, which then scaffolded a function, a project like that. Uh, we also had a, a bunch of uh, templates that I'd started uh, myself a couple of, um, a few years ago of just different um, varying functions, a bit like our original Twimlets in a way, uh, that allowed you to kind of template and have a bunch of functions that you could start and use uh, straight away. And we ended up collecting these, uh, and then Twilio Run, uh, we, we added an API for the serverless platform. So Twilio Run be able, started to be able to deploy to the, tw to the platform. The function templates were then built in so you could generate function, generate applications using those existing templates. Uh, and we had a bunch of stuff. Um, as a parallel thing, we also had a, a Twilio built a CLI uh, so that you could do a bunch of things with the API without having to go into the console. So um, you can install it with npm install, uh, dash G Twilio CLI if you're a Node user, or if you're on Mac, you can use brew install. Uh, and then it can do things like list out messages or list logs in your debugger. I, I had that right here. Like, um, you'd be surprised how many uh, bad gateways and not found errors you have when you have a bunch of demo numbers knocking about. Um, so uh, the CLI allowed you to do that. But also, because it was built in, um, it was built in JavaScript, it was built in Node.js, 
using Oakliff, which is uh, the tool Heroku published uh, that they use to create their uh, CLI. Uh, we could build in CLI plugins as well. And this is one of the reasons we actually use Node.js for this is so that anybody could kind of make plugins work for them as well. And so we built uh, all of our kind of separate projects into uh, a serverless plugin that allowed you to initialize a new project uh, and then start it up um, with built-in ngrok support uh, again, uh, and then deploy that to Twilio's infrastructure, allowing you to uh, um, take your projects from, from kind of zero to deployed, uh, all the while being able to test those webhooks and get there in the end. So that is kind of the trouble with webhooks. They are difficult to test, difficult to understand when you first come across them as a developer, especially if you do not have the tools uh, ready and waiting to use them. We've attacked that on multiple fronts to try and make it easier for developers to understand and build with them from the simple applications where you can just use a, a Twimlet uh, to generate your, your, your idea or a Twimble bin to respond with something static, uh, to education with our, our documentation and with our in-person events and with the game Twilio Quest. For non-developers, we have uh, Studio and drag and drop, and then we've built up this entire developer environment that, that uh, gives you both the serverless toolkit and the serverless platform to de deploy to. Uh, as well as a, as well as the rest of the Twilio CLI, which is there ready for um, for people to for developers to use on their command line rather than having to click around an interface. So um, I hope that's been an, uh, interesting for you. Uh, if you are planning to kind of offer webhooks or you have webhooks as an offering, uh, the ways that we can educate developers about this are just numerous. Uh, I'm excited to see what else people build with this. Uh, if you have any questions, oh, so if you are interested, you can play Twilio Quest, go hit up twilio.com slash quest, uh, or hit up our open source projects, which include that serverless toolkit on github.com slash Twilio Labs. I'd love to see what you think there. Uh, otherwise, uh, that's me. Thank you so much for coming along. Uh, as I said, you can find me anywhere online as Phil Nash or, uh, or email me at philnash at twilio.com. I'd be happy to take any questions. Um, thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, thanks, Phil. So I, I'm, I'm really, really interested in the Twilio Quest, so maybe we will try it to lie. Okay, it so uh, one, maybe one, one quick question. Uh, um, so you mentioned about the trouble of the, of the uh, web hope, and then we do all, always hear about the difficulties in testing or load testing or even doing the performance uh, uh, testing on the web hope. Do you have any quick uh, advice or quick uh, one or two sentence uh, suggestion to them? Oh, load testing for handling your own webhooks or sending out webhooks? Which way around? Sorry. <laughs> oh, okay, but I, I I just want to highlight uh, maybe is there uh, maybe just some performance stuff or, or latency stuff to in the handling web hub? Do you have any quick advice on that one or quick sharing? Oh, uh, in terms of uh, in terms of handling it, um, if you're handling web hooks and you need performance advice, then it's almost the same as any other kind of handling uh, API requests or or web requests or anything like that. Um, tools like um, was it Apache Bench or uh, or Artillery and Node are great for kind of throwing a bunch of requests at things. Um, although it is of course important to make those requests try and look the same as the webhooks that you are trying to consume. Um, that's the kind of thing I'd start looking at um, in terms of latency. If there's a if there's a possibility uh, of you kind of locating that server near uh, mm -hmm. near to the uh, service sending a webhook, uh, that's kind of important too. Uh, and I, I, that particularly comes to mind because um, Twilio recently has started kind of offering edge locations uh, mm. for like connectivity to our APIs, so that it, you don't have to you don't have to put your server uh, in uh, the same uh, AWS data center that we have. Uh, we have more localized uh, versions these days, which is uh, and we have edges in I think um, Singapore and in uh, uh, Sydney over this part of the world. So um, uh, that's. Uh, I, reduce latency by getting closer to the to the server as well okay thanks okay thanks for you so uh thanks for our time so